We showed this website last week and we're going to show it again today. So our focus this month has been on savings. So this is actually America Saves Week. And so we want to bring some attention to another tip here. So on the America Saves website, so americasaves.org. Keisha, if you don't mind, would you send that out through the uh, chat function so everybody can have that website? On the America Saves website, there was a ton of different information. Um, I absolutely recommend that you go to this website. They have actually just recently updated the layout. So if you've been here before, there is some new stuff here for you. Um, I want to draw your attention since we are talking about, we are numbering tips and talking about different ways to save. I want to draw your attention here. If you go to America Saves under general savings, there are 54 ways to save money, 54 ways to save money. Um, so this is a great article here uh, talking about different ways to set money aside and get it into saving different ways to trim your budget. So I absolutely recommend that website. All right. And now before we get started. So today our presentation was on 30 ways to trim your budget. And in doing research for this presentation, we kept coming back to the song 50 Ways to Lose Your Lover. So at this point, I am going to let you guys join in on our enjoyment of this song. And we're going to come back because you can get inspiration in anything. I started listening to this and I was listening. Hey, that's a great way to save. This is a great way to save. And hear the lyrics and see if you can make an association with a way that you could trim your budget. Slip out the back, Jack. Make a new plan, Stan. You don't need to be coy, Roy. Just get yourself free. Hop on the bus, Gus. You don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the keys, Lee, and get yourself free. So while that's a fun song, I started to think about all the ways that that actually pertained to something I could do to maybe trim my budget. Hop on the bus, Gus, right? I could do something to trim my transportation. Drop off the keys, Lee. I could uh, get a new housing situation, maybe sign a different lease. So there's inspiration in everything. And even though we are going to talk today about 30 ways to trim your budget, there are numerous, numerous ways to trim your budget and make a change. So before we jump into what those ways are, I just want to recap. I know we've looked at this several times, but making sure that we are preparing ourselves for action. So we're going to talk about information today. And information is half of the battle. Nothing means anything until we take action. So here we are, the planner, listening to this information in this awesome webinar. But when we get ready to go out and do, sometimes there is a break or a gap in between what we wanted to do and what we actually did. So we're going to start by bridging that gap between the present me and the future me with establishing habits that lead me to the success that I want. So. The way that we're going to start looking at habits is number one, being aware of what we're doing, and number two, setting up actions that can help me start moving down that road. So, when I'm looking at those, I want to keep in mind that the results that I'm seeing are always coming from an action. So, it's either the result I want or the result I don't want, but it's coming from an action that I took. That action is coming from a view or a belief that I have. And that, ex that view or belief is coming from an experience, an emotion, an identity. So what we want to do sometimes when we're starting to form those new habits that bridge the gap between the present me and the future me is I might need to do some reframing and set up some experiences that have me develop positive emotions shift my identity, give me some new beliefs that I then take actions and get the results that I'm looking for. And a great way to do that is something called Tiny Habits. I love this book. Um, this by B.J. Fogg, Tiny Habits. Um, he 
has laid out just wonderful information. But the, the big crux of that is starting small. A lot of times when we go out to do something and finances are no different, we want to just go big or go home and we get overwhelmed. Our motivation runs out. So when we're starting to form habits, when we're making some trims that we want to keep constant, keep it consistent, I challenge you to make it small and achievable. Make it something that you want to do. Create those positive emotions. Start to shift that identity. Start small. Add a little bit. Get some success. Add a little bit more and form that habit that leads to success there. All right. So let's talk about what some of the actionable items are some of the ways to trim your budget so the first area that we're going to start with is food food is surprisingly um, sometimes some of the biggest area of our budget that we can make some modifications um, so i know a lot of people once they start looking at where their money is going so that awareness piece they are just shocked to see how much they spend out of their budget eating out, um, buying groceries, doing different things. So food is a major area in, in our budget that we can start to make some shifts. So one of the things we want to think about with food is planning meals for when we're away from home. So when we're away, we always tend to go towards what's convenient, right? If I'm on a road trip or if I'm not at my home for lunch, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go for what's convenient and that's always gonna cost money and sometimes not the money that I planned for. So going ahead and planning for the being proactive, packing my lunch, packing those snacks when I'm away, those can go a long distance in helping me avoid the cost and then to avoid the foods that may not be working for me. Still talking about foods, another great thing to do is have some snacks prepared. Um, so maybe you have one day a week, maybe it's a Sunday where you get a lot of items out and you prepare some healthy snacks. So this can, this feeds back into number one, being prepared for those times when you just need to grab something convenient. So uh, this allows us to, number one, save money, and then two, again, eat, make sure we're eating the way that we want to eat for our health. Talking about food also, being proactive. So all these tips have on being proactive so we can cut costs. So if we can plan a menu for the week, um, specifically if we can plan maybe a meal and make it larger so we can use it multiple times, that is a great way to trim our budget and save some off of the grocery bill, making sure um, that we were plan uh, cooking a larger meal so we can use it more than once. And then planning our meals, we are not eating out as much. So if I have my meal plans and have everything ready to go, then when I get um, it's at the end of that day, I've worked all day and I'm super tired and all I want to do is uh, go home. This kind of helps me have something already ready, so maybe I'm not stopping by the fast food and, and spending money on something to bring home. Now, I will challenge you here on planning a meal for a week. When we were talking about at the beginning about making sure we're making it small and we want to be aware of making things overwhelming. When I started doing meal planning for the week, um, I had this crazy idea that I had to come up with all these fantastic recipes and try this new thing and try that new thing. And I just got overwhelmed and, and I quit all of it. So what I would do, what I what I did, what I would maybe challenge you guys to do is I made a list of what was I already cooking? What were we already eating? And I started there. So I didn't try to implement something new that required 20 ingredients, things I never heard of. I started with what we were already doing and I added on a meal every now and then to the plan. But meal planning, that meal preparation can go a very long way in benefiting your budget as well as benefiting your health. All right, another area on food is to shop seasonally, shop seasonally. So if we are trying to buy asparagus in the middle of winter, 
it's going to be cost us a whole lot more than if we're buying when it's in season. So we can definitely trim our budget by buying when produce is in season. The other thing that we can do is when it is in season, and this is actually the next one, the other thing that we can do is at that point when we spot those good deals, we can buy extra. Now with produce, we want to make sure we're preserving it. So we can fly, uh, we can freeze food, can it for a minute. There's a ton of ways to preserve food, but shopping seasonally so that it is on sale, that it is a good deal, and then preserving it so that we have it for later. These are some really big tips on ways that we can trim some of our budget around food. This is a big one. Um, organic. I have seen organic food be two and three times more than what the other produce cost. So uh, if we are eating organically, um, I would encourage you to be selective about those items in which you decide uh, to buy organically. So there are some items where if I'm not eating the outside of the produce, I'm only eating the inside it may be much, uh, much more cost effective and health wise, it might be fine to be eating the non organic food. So in your handout, there is a site to go. Um, it is consumer reports site that talks about um, the cost of organic foods and do your research. What what produce is OK to buy not organic? So um, selectively buying that here. So an orange. Orange, for instance, I'm not going to eat the outside of an orange, but a strawberry I am. So being selective there can absolutely help cut down on the budget there. So finishing up on foods, we're going to talk about the farmer's markets. Farmer's markets with your local producers can be a great way to save on your budget. So you're not only helping locally and helping uh, farmers locally, but you can also be helping your budget. So the big thing on farmer's markets is you want to shop around to the different merchants. Not all the merchants, even if they look like they have the same produce, are going to be charging the same. Um, so those at the front may be charging more than those at the back. So it may be advantageous to walk to the back of the farmer's market, comparison shop, may, and negotiate even, uh, see if they will take a different rate. But shopping at farmer's markets can be a great way to find that in-season produce and save money. Another thing on farmers markets is shopping near closing time. So if I'm shopping near closing time, absolutely true that the, the selection may not be as much, but also the negotiation comes in there. So you have vendors that are much more likely uh, to sell at a reduced rate um, because they don't want to be traveling and have to take their produce back home. The last thing here on farmer's markets is asking for recipes. So sometimes, and this is where I love the internet too, but absolutely asking some of the farmers for recipes, sometimes I'll see something and I have never seen that before. I've never seen that vegetable or that fruit, that piece of produce before. So asking, um, asking the merchant, how do you prepare this? How do you cook this? They'll usually have some great ways and the Internet has some great ideas as well. So not letting ourselves be put off or overwhelmed by that, which we don't know. Sometimes it turns out that it's just amazing. Uh, so don't be afraid there to ask for recipes. So moving on from food, let's talk about health or dental care, health or dental care. So we can find some savings here sometimes by emailing or setting up a phone appointment with our doctor. So I know a lot of times, especially right now during COVID, our, our uh, medical professionals are willing to communicate with us in other ways. And sometimes an email or a phone appointment won't carry the same cost or co-payment as it would if you were actually going into the office. So this is a good one to check with your health and dental care and see what are some ways that maybe you can reach out and communicate to them that won't cost you as much as going into their office. Also, with health and dental care, if available, a lot of areas have dental schools. So we'll talk about this with several things, but there are 
are schools for anything from dental, maybe I'm looking at massage therapy, haircuts, and we'll talk about medical and it uh, ongoing, but when there are schools for that service, they are going to, the students there are gonna be supervised by a licensed professional, but you can also receive really good services at a much discounted rate. So looking at what schools are in your area, uh, what clinics are in your area, that helps reduce costs there, and um, it's also in a supervised environment. This can help us save a lot of money on our budget. All right, so number 12, we're talking about gas. So you may not be driving around as much now as you were before. Um, and it looks like gas has gone up a little bit. It was super cheap. But one thing to be watching out with gas is that I want to make sure, if at all feasible, that I am getting the lowest prices. So I can use several apps like Gas Buddy or Gas Guru. I think there's a couple more out there that I've used to see what some of the lower prices are for gas. But I caution you with this. If you are having to drive a long way to get uh, pay 10 cents less on gas, you may actually be paying more. So absolutely use the uh, the apps that help you with lower costs, but use common sense around the savings there. Number 13, number 13. So talking about cars, we we're talking about gas. Now we're going to talk about the insurance. Shop around for different carriers. So this goes with anything where there is more than one company that offers the service. If you have more than one company, you have competition and insurance is no different. So shop around the different carriers and look to see what different rates you can get. Um, so brokers or insurance agents may be a good place to go because they can get your information and then they can put that in a system where they can pair multiple different carriers so you're not calling each carrier they're doing that comparison for you and finding you want to make sure that you've got the same policy the paul an adequate policy but at a cheaper rate combining your coverage so a lot of insurance companies will give you um give you discounts if you combine your coverages so i let's say that you put your home and auto together you might get a 10% discount. So making sure that you know what discounts are out there. So talk, that's it. number 15, making sure we know what discounts they offer. Do I get a discount for a student driver if they have good grades? Um, do I get a discount if I am over a certain age? Do I get a discount for taking a safe driving course? Um, do I get a discount for combining, combining different things? So wanna make sure that I know all of the discounts that are out there. And so when we're talking about insurance, when we're talking about uh, shopping around to different carri carriers or combining those coverages, one thing that I will um, point out to you guys and make sure you look at is look at your policy or have a reputable agent look at your policy with you make sure you know what is covered in your policy. And here is where I got caught. Make sure that you're not overinsured. So I was not paying attention to my insurance policy and my home was insured for double the amount of what it was worth. Now, what do you think that did? That shot up my premiums. So I was paying more every month in premiums because I had too much insurance coverage. So when I adjusted that, I say I had adequate coverage, adequate insurance, but I saved on my premiums so that I could apply that to something else. So make sure that you know what you're covering. You want to have it adequately covered, but you don't want to be over covered. The other thing that you can do, so talking about making sure that it's adequate and it is not over covered, is that you may want to adjust your coverage. So if you have a car and it has um, full comprehensive on it, 
and you were saying, you know what, this is this is a two thousand dollar car. I could replace this if I needed to. It probably doesn't make sense to have comprehensive on this, and I can put liability only and save myself money every month. So making sure I'm looking at those policies and adjusting that coverage if needed. All right, number 17. Number 17, we talk about property taxes. Another area that we want to make sure that we review. Um, you'll be surprised, but a lot of times there is an error or your house is listed for more than it's worth, um, assessed for more than it's worth. So making checking your property taxes, checking your property tax card, making sure there's no errors on there because that can absolutely adjust your tax bill if your house is assessed for too much. So I want to make sure to check that. I also want to check in and, make, and see if there's any discounts on there. So this is not one that I thought about before. I didn't think there were discounts on property taxes, but absolutely there are. So there might be exemption programs for senior citizens or for disabled persons. So I absolutely, I want to see um, if there's any discounts that I can get there on property taxes. So 19, number 19, we're moving into pet care. So this is similar to the dental school that we talked about before, but if your area has a local veterinary school, I can often save a lot of money. I can receive the same services. They're supervised by a licensed professional. I can receive the same services and a lot of times for a lot less money. So knowing what I have in my area, um, and we have you know a great uh, veterinary school down at Auburn, so there may be a lot of resources here in our area. So knowing what's there. Number 20 also talks about pet care. Um, so there is a there's a website here, and this is also in your handout, but the Humane Society has a ton of resources on their website about assisting with pet care costs and pet care needs. So another way to trim your budget, if you can find a resource out there and use that resource, you can use your own financial resources in another area. Number 21, ask for current deals or promotions. So on my cell phone, internet, cable, I wanna make sure that I have got the best deal. So give them a call, see what deals they have going on. I will, though, tell you, put an alert on your phone when you make that deal. Most of the time, they're gonna give you a deal or promotion for let's say six months. And then at the end of that deal or that promotion, it's gonna go up to normal price. And they are banking on the fact that most all of us forget. I have been caught in this countless times. So when I'm calling and do call because you can get that those deals and you can save that money and trim your budget, do call, do get that deal, do get that promotion. But if it only lasts for a limited amount of time, put an alert in your phone right then to let you know on that day before it expires that you call and you cancel that promotion because we're talking about trimming our budget, not adding to it. All right, number 22, we're starting to talk about um, the holidays a little bit here. Um, but what we're looking at here is hosting a, a toy and clothing exchange. So I know Huntsville has had those. I think right now those markets, what, what were they called, Keisha, the markets? So, yeah, and there was a really big one that had it had a, a name, but yeah, this something market, kids market or something like that was at the VDC. So I don't think that they had it right uh, this year, maybe due to COVID. But you'll see those swaps on uh, Facebook uh, Marketplace has some, and as COVID starts to settle down, you'll see um, these happening again. But doing a clothing or toy exchange, so maybe you if you're in a group or an association where people can come together and exchange goods, um, this is a really great way to trim your budget because you are giving somebody else something that they can use, you are getting something that you can use, and you're not having to spend money for that. So exchanging items 
is a great way. Also shopping at garage sales and thrift stores. I love, love these. Um, I have found just some incredible deals at garage sales. Um, you find brand new thr uh, items at thrift stores. Our, our manager, uh, Jonathan Fowler, likes to, uh, he tells a story about he bought his first uh, suit at a thrift store for his first job interview. He, I think the suit was like less than $5. The, to get it cleaned was $5. So he went into the interview with a $10 suit that he got at the thrift store and he got the job. So we don't always have to spend $100 on items like that. This to me is probably one of the biggest ways to trim the budget is finding those items at garage sales and thrift stores. Can you tell I'm excited about that one, Keisha? Oh. <laughs> All right, number 24, waiting for holiday sales and deals. All right, so this is getting into the holiday season, which we just came out of, but waiting for those sales and deals before we make a purchase. So this is using your uh, resources, doing your research, to find out how much something cost and when it goes on sale. So I would encourage you here, watch out for the sales where they have actually upped the price and then put on these huge sales. And so you're looking at the price and then you go and do your research. Maybe you pull it up on Amazon and it's actually cheaper on Amazon or on another website than it is there at the store at 50% off. So while holiday sales and deals can be massive for trimming your budget, you want to be careful of falling into the trap of the sale and getting excited about the find and making sure that you've done your research on how much that item is actually worth. Number 25. So if you have young children, not young children, but if you have older children in your home, absolutely helping encourage them to do some part-time jobs. So can they do some babysitting, some yard work, and they can earn some money there to help pay it forward, give it uh, to help the family out, maybe another way to trim a bu your budget. Maybe they're getting some skin in the game by getting a part-time job and paying for their cell phone plan. Uh, so they're paying for something that they're actually using. So this is a great way, if it makes sense for your situation, um, to, to uh, help the family finances. Number 26, again, on family. So family activities. So especially right now, it can be hard. We want to uh, keep, we have all the family at home, trying to keep them entertained. How do we do that without just wrecking our budget? We wanna make sure that we're looking at some of those cheap or free events in the community. So we're checking out parks, community centers, libraries, different things. Uh, there's a lot of free venues, um, a lot of online events, those things that I can use that will not bust my budget, that, but they will help my trim my budget and also keep the family entertained. Volunteering. Volunteering is always an awesome way and you're giving back and it costs you nothing. So while a lot of volunteering opportunities may be slim right now due to COVID, there's usually something that we can do, whether it's getting um, your family involved in making something at home and then delivering it. Volunteering doesn't always have to mean going to that place uh, to be involved. You can do something at home and help out. Also investing in a annual state or city park pass, um, so we can invest in those and it can be something that we can use ongoing will actually help uh, won't be as costly as using it every time. And this is really good when right now we're all looking for activities to do outside and the weather is starting to warm up. So hopefully we won't, won't see what we saw last week with freezing snow. We're starting to see some some nicer weather. And so getting outside in the open space, this can be a uh, great opportunity right now. So check out those annual passes, see how they can save you money in the long run. Again, on holidays, on holidays, we want to stock up on after holiday supplies after the uh, holiday happens. So I know we're well past Christmas at this point, but so what's our next holiday, Easter? 
So maybe after Easter, the week after Easter, things are half off on sale. I'm getting those items. Or after Christmas, I can get uh, wrapping supplies half off. I can get decorating supplies. So I am trimming my budget by shopping the after holiday sales and having that ready for next year. Also gift cards. So this is a really big thing that we see uh, around birthdays, the holidays is gift cards. So we can, instead of buying a gift, there are a lot of opportunities we have with re-gifting gift cards. Also on giftcards.com, Casey, if you don't mind, if you'll put that in the uh, chat function, thank you. Um, giftcards.com, I saw something there about turning cards into cash. Now I'd be careful there because I didn't look and see what fees were associated with that. And I'm sure that there's probably a lot involved. Um, but this can be a great way to trim your budget instead of going out and buying gifts, re-gifting something that you already have or turning those gift cards into cash and being able to use that. So when you are looking at trimming your budget, one of the biggest things that you can do is to avoid overspending. We all get in our way and are the biggest barriers sometimes to trimming the budget. So being aware of what uh, our triggers are, so being uh, able to identify those triggers, is it every time I go into a store, I'm triggered to buy something. Um, every time I get stressed, I'm triggered to go on Amazon and buy something. Um, what are my triggers? So starting to see when I am doing those actions, becoming aware of that and change those actions. What can I put in place instead of those things? How can I reframe that thought? But the biggest thing is awareness and then action. So awareness, identify your triggers and then action, plan something else, plan another strategy. So make good choices today. So you don't have regrets tomorrow. None of us want regrets tomorrow. All right, let me show you guys a couple of other resources and then we are gonna open it up for questions. All right, so there is an article and it's all over the internet. So you can just do a Google search of 101 ways to make $1,000. And so again, we're just looking for ideas. Not all of these are going to work for everybody's situation. Everybody's situation is different. And where getting a roommate for one person may allow me to save a lot of money and trim my budget, that just may not be feasible to somebody else. So there's a um, really good article here, 101 ways to make an extra thousand dollars where it just brainstorms and gives ideas breaks those down into the different areas and you can just go through and look and see, do any of these make sense for me or can I modify any of those? Uh, so another good, good brainstorming activity. On our website, so if you go over to redfcu.org, come under tools and discounts, go to the bottom here where it has financial resources. We have some additional resources here that can help you on your financial journey at the top, we have two resources. Um, Member Solutions is our on-site financial education team. So their information is here where you can contact them. Financial education, is that what I said? That's who we are. These are free certified financial counselors. So we do partner with them, but they're not financial education. These are financial counselors. So Member Solutions, their information is here. Telephone number, email, you can... Uh, make an appointment with them. Also, we partner with Balance. It, it, they are a financial vendor. They do some, uh, they also have very good free uh, accredited financial counselors. We use them as a backup for member solutions. Um, they have great information there and then their online resources. They have a wealth of information there, um, some self-paced educational modules and just a ton of different tools there. And then we have a link to the community 211 database that United Way put together. So this lists the different community resources. So again, a good way to trim your budget is to see what resources are available for you and your community. 
And if you can use those resources, trim your budget, you can use your money in other ways that work well for you. And we have some information on credit score. If you have a lending product with us or a credit card with us, your credit score is in online banking. We have a link to get your credit report. And then down at the bottom under seminars and webinars, this is the listing of all our recorded and live webinars. So after we do these live webinars, we have get a re, uh, recording and they are posted out here. So you'll see there are recorded presentations for a number of topics, credit, debt, psychology of spending, budgeting, a ton of stuff out here. That is also where you'll see the live webinars, like the one that we are listening to today.